today I'm just going to go through some tie on knocking points. So, the reason why I thought I might do this is we get loads of questions in the shop and to my email and to my Facebook and all that sort of stuff on how to do this. So, rather than explaining to each person individually how I do it, we thought we might make a couple of um, videos. And, and that'll show you how I do it. Look, I'm, I'm not saying this is 100% gospel, the right way to do it. I'm saying this is how I do it, okay? So we're actually working on Andrew Cookle's bow. Um, so Andrew's a great shooter, um, and he uses scout bow strings, which is nice of him, and uh, they seem to go well for him. He's done all right this year, hasn't he? So, okay, so tie on knocking points. Done all the basics of the setup, Peeps in, bows timed, um, and to start off with Eastern Bow Square. Any uh, good quality bow square, um, I'd try to avoid any knockoff stuff. You need this to be perfect, you can't afford half a job. Okay, so I'll start off with if, if Rachel, if you can just get in down here actually and show. I try to get the top of the blade. Um, at the bottom of the burger hole just as a starting point unless anyone's told me preferences on where they want it that's just my starting point okay that's where I default to okay so you just set up your bow square so it's just touching the top of the blade okay then got it yeah then I just use BCY number 62 XS 0.018. I've been using this braid for years. Doesn't fail, always works, and it grabs quite well. So what I'm aiming for here is see that zero? That zero is square. So what I mean by square is the top of my bottom knocking point is going to be square is zero, which is also, if you look down here at the blade, it's at the top of the blade. Okay. All right, let's do this. So, you get your thread. You see that, Rach? So you get the thread, feed it under. Then I go through twice. <laughs> and the phone goes off. All right, welcome back. Um, we had a little gap there because the phone went off, so uh, Rachel's gonna do her best to edit that out and try and make it as clean as possible for me. But it also gives me the chance to go through this threading and how I do it. So everyone's been taught the old granny knot. I'll show you out here how I'm gonna do it. So normally when you're tying your granny knot, you only go through once. What I want you to do is to go through twice, okay? So we're going to do that here. If you can hear that noise in the background, that's Scout jumping on the trampoline. Okay, once, twice, and then when you tie it and pull it down, see how we come around. Rach, if you can bring it around here and show them how we've got it straight over the top of the number one, a zero, sorry, over here. Can you see that? That's lined up with a zero. All right, good. All right, so you pull that down quite firmly. Now, that is the top of the bottom knocking point. So that's the end of the bow square. So basically what you're doing now is you're tying away from the center. So first we started off with a double. Now we're just doing a single. So you're pulling that tight once. And we're going again once at the top again so that was the top now you're going underneath the whole time you're moving away from where your knock will be once one more time so you're always tying away from where your knock will be i don't like using glue however at this point it's about the only time i do i put a dot of super glue there always have I tie it, so the normal granny knot, 
yes, I know there are other ways of doing it, but as I said, this is just how I do it. So two little endy bits. Then, can you just burn those end bits off? I think the ends of my fingers might be dead, so just be careful when you do that, you don't burn yourself. But uh, as you can see, it's nice and smooth. What you do now, is grab the, the arrow that you're using, or in particular, if you don't have the exact arrow, make sure you've got the knock. Put it on tight. All right, so it's a tight fit here. And then what I like to have is maybe half a mil gap so that it just doesn't pinch. I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. So you get a bit more of the BCY number 62 XS. Um, and no, I'm actually currently not sponsored by BCY. I just like using it because I truly think it's the best stuff. So we're going through twice. So this we're doing exactly the same thing, twice, but we're working away from the knocking point this time. So if you can see in there, there's about a mil gap. All right. Can you see in there? So the knot can slightly move, so it's not being pinched. All right. Take it off. Now, what we're going to do at the bottom, or what we did at the bottom is now what we're doing at the top. So we did the two at the top. So we're going one underneath, pull through, and we're going to work away from the knock. One at the bottom. One at the top. I know there's all sorts of ways of tying this. You can have one at the bottom, one at the top, two. There's loads of different options. I'm saying this is what I use and this is how I set up stock standard bows in the shop if no one tells me exactly how they want it done. This is how every single bow comes out of Pat's archery or scout bow strings, unless I've been told otherwise. Let's tie it off. Cut up the blade. Lighter. Tie it off. That's the end of tie on knocking points really for compounds, in my opinion. Um, like I said, I'm not saying it's 100% right. I'm saying it's how I do it. Um, I think it's nice, it has never moved on me. Um, I've been lucky with that. Um, so the next part we'll go on and do is D-loops, um, but we're gonna split that off into a separate section. So goodbye for now.